Hello and welcome. My name is Sarah Bagdasarians from the Consulate General of Switzerland in Montreal. And today I'm talking to Mario Pacioli. So Mario, hello and welcome to you. You are a Swiss hello. citizen, an actor, author, composer and performer, and above all, multilingual. Your mother tongue mm -hmm. is Orange. And we are talking to you as part of our Swiss Film Club Canada, which is screening the Swiss feature film Amour Sans Affin by Christophe Schaub from February 22nd to the 26th. So um, Amour Sans Affin is a film in Swiss German and Romanche, and it is precisely in order to talk about the latter that we contacted you. Uh, this week, we're celebrating the fourth na national language. It has been recognized uh, on February the 20th, 1938 uh, for, uh, as well, in parentheses, German, French, and Italian um, have been recognized in 1848. Uh, Romanche is spoken by 0.5% of the population in Switzerland, um, which represents 60,000 uh, people. So um, on this shoot, on the shoot of the film, uh, Mario, you've coached the team so that the actresses and the actors could deliver the dialogue in Romanche. Um, a language that they didn't speak at first. So could you tell us how um, you've been contacted for this film? Well, hello, Sarah, first of all, it's nice <laughs> that we can have the chance to speak to each other today. Well, yes, uh, I remember when uh, they were planning to do this movie and to shoot the movie uh, in the region where I grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, it happened that uh, I was working on a romance on a music project at the same time and that I spent a lot of time in, uh, in Surselva. So uh, Mariano Chua, who was one of the initiators of Amour Sense Film and who worked also on uh, the romance project I was doing, asked me one day if I was interested in uh, coaching the actress and actresses during the movie Amour Sans Fin, and uh, I thought that it was a very nice opportunity to uh, to discover maybe the language, uh, my mother tongue in a, in a different uh, way. So I said yes. So how did you go about making how much their mother tongue? Um, how did you uh, teach, let's say, the main character, Rebecca in the Mao, uh, since she, didn't, uh, she did not speak how much? Well, first of all, we had to uh, figure out which dialect they had to speak, because uh, you have to know that in Romance, uh, if you go from village to village, Romance already changes, because every village has its own particular words or ways of saying things. So, and once we figured out that, then, um, well, the, most of the work, actually, the, the actors did, because they uh, learned after they had the, the, the dialogues. And... Uh, <clears throat> Then uh, after that, of course, uh, I worked with them and then we adjusted whatever had to be adjusted. So you, you've told me um, that you've sent them some recorded files um, before they, the actual shoot so they could uh, memorize the, the sound or the rhythm of the, of the Romance language. And um, mm. how did you make it possible for them to then deliver it uh, in a native way of speaking? <laughs> well, uh, once we figured out the dialect, so uh, then the, the big wor work started. So we, uh, well, knowing that they are professional actors, actually mm. the, the language is like a work tool for them and they know exactly how to use it. But then as you say it very well, it had to be natural and not sound um, that they learned it by heart because you can say a word just saying it, but it has also to sound uh, natural. So that was a very, very big word. So first of all, what I did is, uh, as you said, I uh, recorded all the dialogues on a tape and uh, gave it to them and they learned it by heart. So that was the first step. Then at the second uh, step, uh, we sat together and uh, we repeated difficult uh, passages over and over again to give it the, the final touch. And then um, they worked, especially uh, Rebecca, who played the, the, the main character, Mona, who uh, didn't speak a word of romance actually before. She, she did a lot of work uh, 
home first and uh, if she, during the preparation of the dialogues if she had a question she, she sent me some uh, some text messages and then i i send them send them back to to her to say no say it like this say it like this but the, during the movie i really was very close to them and uh, we worked um, every scene uh, over and over again before it actually get uh, shot so you worked the scenes before before shooting and during the shoots did you what, what happened when you noticed that like a pronunciation wasn't exactly how it was supposed to do to to be sorry well it was i was uh, sitting next to the cameraman and <laughs> with a with a with Not a pen that. and a paper <laughs> I was uh, sometimes I was sorry for them because they were actually there to be actors <laughs> and not to pay attention to attention to to speaking right. So they had to do a double work. So I went to them after every take and I, and I, and I told them, I'm sorry, I know that maybe the take was perfect, but the revenge was wasn't maybe uh, even if it was often it was very perfect uh, from the beginning on but sometimes uh, they said gosh the take was so good but but it has some mistakes in it so that was my that was my work <laughs> and i think it was even sometimes a, a psychological worst work to <laughs> to keep them uh, calm <laughs> but still make them uh, correct what they had to to adjust so uh, but it was fun and in the oh. evening every time where we even if we sometimes we were like uh, crazy in the evening uh we laughed about it and and uh, and it was a very very nice experience and uh, and uh, a very nice work together and the collaboration so a question here came to mind uh, as you were talking about you know going over the dialogue you know after each scene but did some of the dialogue uh, um, could have been um let's say recorded afterwards even if the scene was you perfect or was it like he had to be in sync with the scene you know, uh, no, they, they, just, yeah. they retake the dialogues in some movies but the, in this movie that didn't happen it was just one shot and that's it yeah i think that uh almost everything that you hear is uh, the original uh, sound okay I don't know if after if if they did some some takeovers because of technical problems or I don't know like they do it in movies but not because of the romance okay because uh, no no that was very uh, that was an uh, uh, an important question uh, an important um, point also from the from the director that they speak uh, correctly from the begin on also, I think it's a question to to get in the right mood and to mm -hmm. because and if you start to say, well, we can do it over again later, something something uh, gets lost. I think mm. in the magic of the of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And uh, uh, do you have a word in mind that was hard for Mona to pronounce that you had to uh, really train? Well. There were a few, but I, I I remember one. Actually, it became also our running gag during the during the, the shoot, and it's that's the word "zgrzajvel," which means oh, it's terrible or it's awful. <laughs> and actually, it's not not even that uh, complicated to say "zgrzajvel," but knowing that she is actually native uh, German speaking. Uh, and to know that the uh, German languages have another pronunciation than Latin language. So uh, she would more say it Schkerscheivel. And if you say Schkerscheivel, every Roman knows that it's a German who speaks. So, so we had to erase that. And uh, so we spent a lot of time one day, maybe uh, like, I don't know, an hour on this word Schkerscheivel, Schkerscheivel, Schkerscheivel. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and after that, Sometimes uh, she 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 said it over and over again during the shooting, <laughs> and uh, she said, "Oh, that's Gorzaiva." <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can try to say it by the way, Gorzaiva. Okay, so yeah, let me try. Let me <laughs> say it again. Gorzaiva. <laughs> that's perfect. 
Bueno. <laughs> you're ready. You're ready for the movie. <laughs> and that means horrible, correct? That means horrible. So next time yes. I can just say, oh, je gerjaival. <laughs> gerjaival and then perfect. <laughs> Maybe our uh, audience will, will say it as well. <laughs> yes. yes. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, so did you give them some tips to, to have a better pronunciation or are there any tips that, that can be given if uh, one wants to, uh, you know, uh, explore uh, the Romansh language? Well, I think a good way to do is to listen to the language. That's what I told also to the actors. I, I told them, go, to, go in public places, listen to people speaking, watch them. Uh, uh, how do they use the, their hands when they speak? How do they, uh, where do they put their voices when they, uh, when they speak? What's the melody they use to speak? So, um, so that's, that's also what they did. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm aware that in Canada, you, you won't find uh, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> public places where they speak Romance. <laughs> but uh, another way to, to get used to or to get familiar with the language is also to, to watch movies in mm -hmm. that language. And uh, now you have a Romance uh, movie, Hamuk Sensefin, with even with subtitles, that helps a lot also. Or uh, there is a lot of... Um, uh, Romance music you can find on internet. We have a lot of uh, young artists that uh, sing Romance nowadays, or uh, you can find also uh, TV shows, you can find documentary in Romance, you can find a lot of Romance things on the internet if you have to, uh, if you want to, to discover more of the Romance. Nice. And um, I had a question that I forgot, but then I'll. Oh yes, now I remember. <laughs> no, I was wondering about the letters of the alphabet. Do you pronounce the all the R? You know, like in French and English, we pronounce we pronounce the R, and the English R is more an R. R. Like other things like that that could be seen in the Romance language. Yes, there are, but um, there's not a rule. Actually, mm -hmm. that's a. Uh, it's more typical to some let's actually it's the same thing as the dialect that i told before if you go from village to village or from region to region you have uh, some uh, places where you can find that people say the ah here like the french in the in the um, backwards or you can also find some um regions where they say when where they speak romance with the r, r like the italian mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes even romance between them, they make fun of each other and say, oh, that's Oberländer. Uh, that means uh, someone that comes from this special region who they say the R here. So, uh, but there's no rule, but there are differences, yes. Especially with the R. And uh, how the, uh, what, um... What dialect was chosen for the film? And maybe you know why they chose that dialect. Actually, the dialect that was chosen for the actress who didn't speak Romansh and who learned Romansh was the Sursilvan, because the movie was shot in a, in a, in a village in the Sursilvan, where everybody speaks Sursilvan. So that was actually the, the reason why. But uh, there was an actress, uh, Tonya Maria Zindel, who uh, she plays uh, the role of Julia. She is from Engadin and she speaks Valada. So uh, of course she kept her romance. So uh, also the role, the, the part she played was then a part from uh, somebody who came from Engadin. Mm -hmm. So they, they kept that. But for the actress who learned romance, they learned Sosiban. Okay. Which is also the language, the, 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 uh, the the romance I speak myself, so for me it was easier also yeah. to coach them in the uh, in the romance I know I know best. Mm -hmm. Great. So you've got the Sur Sylvan, the Stad Sylvan, the Zot Sylvan, pardon, the Zur Sylvan, Zot Sylvan. Ah, Zot, come come south. Okay, Zur Miran, Kuter, and Balader. Exactly. Okay. Yes, we have five idioms. Five idioms, and they're regrouped under one that was created. Correct? 
Yes, in the 80s, they uh, created the Humans Grejun, which actually is a, a, an artificial language to become uh, um, an official Romance language. And it's used for all the, the official uh, letters are also sometimes on the television or in the newspapers or everything that has to be um, official. It's in Romance Grejun now. Um, because you have to know that even if we are um, only 60,000 people speaking Romansh, we have five different idioms, as you said before, and those idioms are so uh, different that every time they have to uh, print a new uh, school book, they have to print it in every different idiom because uh, idiom, because they are so different, even grammatically, they are different. Okay, that's quite uh, impressive huh? for uh, it's a smaller region in Switzerland. Yes. It's found in uh, Graubünden in Les Grisons. Um, yes. And um, then um, in the film, do uh, you know how was it perceived by the population? Because it's, it got really famous in Switzerland. And how did the, the population from Graubünden, Les Grisons, uh, received it? Well, I think in general in a very positive way because mm -hmm. uh, I was there at the premiere in, the, in Sagoin where they uh, shot uh, shoot the film. And uh, I was uh, very happy to see that the people were, they had happy faces when they watched the movie. And I think even that they were proud to to have now a, a professional uh, <clears throat> a professional feature film in, in Romance. Um, so during the <laughs> during the premiere, I remember very well. Uh, instead of watching the screen because I knew the movie, I I was watching the the reactions of of the of the audience, which were uh, people from there who knew also sometimes the actors, and they were very. I think they were happy, and we we got a lot of uh, very uh, positive uh, feedbacks also on the rumans because a lot of people were very stunning. Uh, um, surpris. They were very um, impressed, surprised, impressed, impressed? Okay. surprised, and impressed to 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 see that the actors actually some of them they weren't uh, romance speaking, and uh, the way they spoke finally in the movie was they were impressed, and they thought they were romance. Oh, so, nice. That's uh, they a nice did a good one. They, they yes. did a good job, and they did a good job as well. Then they did a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, without the training. And uh, <laughs> did uh, everybody was like a professional actress or actor in the movie or did some, you know, because you've got some scenes where you've kids and and the actors, how did all of that like come together? The main characters were all uh, professional actors, yes. But then you can see some scenes where you see people uh, walking around or you see even uh, a woman in a, in a in a shop who say just one 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 sentence so they were actually people from there from the village and i think that was a very nice thing that they did that they really included the, the persons who lived there to be part of the movie and the, even people from there they appreciated and they that makes this movie become something very f familiar and i think you can feel that if you watch this movie you can feel this this uh this nice energy from the from this this life in the in the village it's really true that it happens like this because uh, i think because of the fact that they really took these persons uh, these people also in the movie that's very nice to include the per the, the the people who live there actually hey? and uh, mm -hmm. then you can they can see each other on the on the big screen yeah so they were cool. proud of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So if people want to learn more about, about Romanche, um, you said the internet, are there, is there a, a league or like um, uh, somebody that, there to protect the language uh, or an official reference to, um, to the, the language? Yes, there, there is, a, for example, the Lia Romancha. Mm -hmm. That's the official organization to protect and promote the Romanche. And uh, we have uh, RTR, 
that is the radio television, radio and television in Rumansh. <clears throat> and then we have a daily newspaper in Rumansh also. We have a publisher, La Casa Editura. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of organizations actually uh, that promote uh, Rumansh and that, that, um, that live Rumansh every day in a very natural way. And um, mm -hmm. we also have a lot, I, I told you that before, we had a lot of young artists that sing Rumansh uh, in all kinds of music. And for me, it's very something very important because uh, I think that's a way that helps to 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 keep this language alive. So uh, it's important that culture is very active to 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 express yeah. this language in the culture. Yeah. Uh, Mario, thank you for sharing uh, this moment with us. And uh, well, dear uh, listener, uh, thank you for watching uh, this uh, segment on Amor Senza Fin and the language Romance. Uh, language, yeah, Romance in Switzerland. If you want to learn more about uh, our Swiss artist here, uh, please visit his internet site at www.mariopacchioli.com. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's Pacchioli, P-A-C-C-H-I-O-L-I. -C -C